Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to do part five of this series on ARIMA models in R. So today what we're going to do is we're going to test the model that we created in four. So in the fourth video, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. And if you haven't seen the first three or four, go back and see them all, because this is uh, video number five in this series, and there's one more after this. So in this uh, video, what we're going to do is we're going to cover uh, testing the model performance with a holdout set and then we're also going to cover uh, whether or not we need to bring back in seasonality into the mix to give us a more accurate uh, prediction and forecasting graph. So if you look at this graph right here, this is what we left off with last time. I ended up with a forecast for you based on a custom ARIMA uh, model of 117 is the PDQ values and this is what you basically saw. Now the problem with this is we have a straight line here, and I'm going to show you that in a minute here for a good bit of it. So what I want to do first is I want to go right here, I'm going to show you the code. So let's go here, and the first thing I want to do is I want to test the model performance with a holdout. So what that means is I'm going to take a subset of the data that I have in this data set, and I'm going to hold that out, and I'm going to apply uh, to have two groups, the holdout and the non-holdout. So what we're doing is first we want to look at our data and see how many uh, rows of data we have in it. So as you can see right here, I've got a number 384, and this is for the de-seasonal count. See this right here that we already created earlier. You see it again up here, and you'll see it throughout this. So this was something we created back in, I believe it was videos one or two. and. Um, so make sure you have that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you in here the seasonal count you'll find in our values. So there they are. There's values and there's the seasonal, right? And right next to it is this one colon 384. So there's 384 uh, pieces of data in there in this series, and that goes in line with the fact that we I told you this was a little bit over a year. A year would be 365 days. So it's a little bit over a year's worth of data. That's why we saw that in the earlier graphs and stuff. So basically what we have is we have a total of 384 days in this series. And what I'm going to do in this is I'm going to make a subset of 350. So in this holdout, we will have basically 35 uh, or 34 items in it. So what we're doing here is we're going to create a, a vector here called hold. And what we're doing is putting a window of the time series function of the seasonal count starting at 350. So it's 350, 351, 352, 353, 354, and so on through 384. There'd be 35 of them. And they're going to go into hold. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a no holdout vector, okay, which is from 350 of these and on this order 117. Now we're going to also do a forecast function here on that fit no holdout. See right here, forecast fit no holdout, comma h equals 35. So that's how this part will work for the forecast no holdout. Then what we do is we create a plot based off of this, and I'm also going to bring in. Let me make sure I have the p in there for you. I'm also going to bring in the lines of the TSD seasonal count. So watch, if I run this through, control and enter, and you'll see that the lines brings in this extra little bit. So without the lines, we would have what we saw last time, the blue line and stuff. But the lines of the time series of the deseasonalized count brings in the actuals. So we can compare this to this, and we see the actuals actually bounces out of our uh, bounds and the thing is you have a 95% confidence interval and an 80% confidence interval. The light gray, the bigger one, the wider one is the 80%, the other is the 95%. And so we know that and the second part here it bounces outside of it and it almost comes outside of up here but it doesn't quite. So what we need to do is we need to look a little bit further. So I could have run this without the lines part on it. I could have run it just this. I'll show you. If I run that, it just gives me this. Okay, so this is the graph we had last time, and it shows me we're within the bounds for our graph, but it's got a long straight line, and is this really true? 
and that's so we're going to use the holdout as our actuals. And so what we're doing is we're plotting an earlier uh, point for our forecast, and then what we're doing is plotting it against the actuals from that time period that we held out. So that would be from period 350 to 384, the last uh, 34, 35 days. So well then when we take this right here, this lines, you can put the plot and the lines on the same graph, and that's what this does. It takes the lines of the time series of the deseasonalized count, and so we just hit control and enter, and there it is, it's added to it. And you can see it there, I could bring it up a little bit bigger if you want to see it a little bit more clear here. And you can see, you know, that it does jump out right here at the top. And uh, it covers it pretty well in here, except for right there, it goes outside of this bound, and then it goes outside of that bound very quickly. So what we need to do is we need to look at this and see that this is a straight line for a good bit of it. So maybe what we need to do is bring seasonality back into it. So you'll see here what I've done is I've created some notes here and uh, the next line of code here is this model needs seasonality added back in because that straight line is not representative of our non-stationary data. It goes up and down and all over the place. We can still predict on that. So what we want to do is we want to add station, or seasonality back in as it's too linear and not realistic for this data set, based because I just said. So let's take this, and what we're going to do is we're going to do an auto arima right here, function on the deseasonal count, where we have, instead of the usual seasonal equals false, we have seasonal equals true. We're adding that back in into this, uh, what we call fit with seasonality, that's our data frame there, our vector. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call the forecast function on fit with seasonality, which we just created and h equals 50. I'm giving it 50 days. So this h equals 50 it could be h equals 30, 30 days, 35 days, whatever you want. I want to see for 50 days. And so I'm going to plot this. I'm going to plot it without the lines yet. I want to plot it as, so I'm going to plot this and you put the plot function of seasonal forecast. So let's just take this and control and enter and give it a second. It has to think when it plots these points and stuff and it'll plot it. Give it a second. Do, 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 do. Depending on how many days you have, it'll take a little bit longer. 50 days is going to take much longer than 30 days or 20 days or 10 days. But the more days you have out, the more accurate it is. There it is. So now you can see, instead of a straight line across, it actually shows uh, seasonality in there. And in this case, I would think that would be more accurate. And you know, I would like to see that better in a report then seeing a straight line and saying, oh, well, you know, this is your prediction that it's going to be within these bounds of that. This is more realistic based on what we've seen in the past. Now, to check the reality of this, I'm going to show you both the uh, one week moving average brought back in and the deseasonalized count. So first, let's take this. This is the time series of the count underscore MA, which is our one week moving average, which we created uh, several videos ago. And if you haven't created go, or seen that, go back and watch that so you can do this. So you just hit control and enter here, and there is our moving average. And if you look, our moving average pretty much goes along within the bounds of our, you know, our points and our uh, graph here. And especially when we get to the forecasted part, it stays completely within the 95 percentile range. So that is great and it lines up with the data that we have in there already for our forecast. Now let's go and add the deseasonal count also. So hit control enter here and that's in there and that's very close to the one week moving average. Now if we had a three week or a four week or a month moving average that might smooth things too much as we talked about in previous uh, videos. So we want to stick with something like a uh, uh, one week moving average here and you can see it's right in line with it. Yeah, it's not going to match it perfectly. It's we're forecasting here. Okay, but you can see that the moving average and the deseasonalized uh, numbers go straight or plot goes straight within the 95 percentile and we're close. So that is very good. Now that's what I'm going to end this video with. I wanted to show you how we're going to uh, further test and see whether we should stay with the 117 custom or go back to the auto arima with the, the uh, seasonalities added back into it. And so we're starting to look at that. In the next video, we're going to go further in this testing. And I'm going to actually put four graphs up next to each other and show you how to do that so we can compare them and say, OK, which should we go with? What is best in this situation? 
This is what data scientists do on a daily basis. There is no, well, this one model is always correct and we always use that. An ARIMA model is very uh, well used. It's one of the most well used uh, prediction models, uh, autoregressive models in uh, data science and data analysis, but there are many other models. So what model should we use? You have to sit and look at them and compare them, and it depends on your data set and it depends on what's right. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like if you haven't done that already. And thanks and have a great day.